Okay, let me show you how I've created those big digits for a small character display. And as I told you can see some of the different variations, I actually ended up creating 24 of those, so 24 different versions of digits. And while it was a lot of fun, it was also quite challenging. Let me explain. So the character display displays characters stored in the internal memory. So when you use it to with, for example, Arduino, the Arduino might send a comment saying, show me a letter A. So for the most part, you don't actually control the individual pixels, you just set which characters to display. Now there is one exception to this, and that's the first eight characters. Those characters could be defined, and you can set the content of those characters. So if I want to create a digit that takes up two by two cells, I just need to use four custom characters, right? The thing is that with eight custom characters, I can only create two digits, which is not enough. I need all ten. So the solution is to reuse those eight custom characters across individual digits as much as possible. And here is one example. So for this particular font, this custom character number two is actually used nine times. So let me show you how I've designed those fonts and how I exported those to be used together with Arduino. However, before we do so, let me talk about the sponsor of today's video, which is a PCB way. And not only do they offer PCBs, but also CNC machining, 3D printing, and other types of manufacturing. Also, if you use the link down in the description, you can get 10 PCBs for free, only paying for shipping. And with all that said, let's get back to our project. For designing the font, I have used Adobe Illustrator, mainly because I know how to use it, and also because I can select the rectangular grid tool and draw something that looks like one digit for a character display, which also consists of 5x8 pixels. Then I can use the Live Paint Bucket tool to fill those pixels with either black or white color, and I can turn this into a new symbol, and create as much copies as I want. And then when I change the symbol, all the instances will get updated. So with a few more clicks, I've ended up with a template like this. And in addition to our 8 custom characters, I've also used a fully empty one and fully filled one, so I have 10 characters to choose from. And for my first font, I actually wanted to use those characters as much as possible. And while some digits are fine, like 4, 6 and 9, we definitely need more characters. So I've added the half filled one for the top and bottom and used those for the missing pieces. And almost everything looks fine except for the digit 8, which looks like the digit 0. So two more characters were needed. The one that is almost filled from top and almost filled from the bottom. And that should make the digit 8 different enough. So that's the first font and I have to say that I kind of like it because of its simplicity. It's also the only font that is not using all 8 custom characters. For the next font, I've created a diagonal line on the fully filled block and use it for the digit 1. And since I like the look, I created a new one with the diagonal line on the bottom and then used those two across multiple digits. I thought it would be nice to have the line also inside, so two more characters were needed, and they are used for digits 6, 8 and 9. Finally, in a very similar way, I've also created a very small hole in the digit 0. And that's how an air font was born. For the next font, I wanted to use a simple geometric shapes to construct individual digits, so line stop bottom and square brackets left and right. And you'll be surprised how many digits you can actually construct with those four shapes. We still need the vertical line for digit 1 and pieces of digits 4, 6 and 7. But after that, it's more about tweaking the individual digits. You can make some of those look better, but obviously not all of those. So this is the final version of the next font. Now for most of the fonts, I've also created a bold version. And it was usually as simple as adding additional line to the individual characters. That said, let's go back to the normal font and try to create a different variation. And in this case, I did cut off the corner of those square brackets. And of course, fix the appearance of some digits. Some of the digits became very small. So I've actually created the left square bracket again. And that certainly helped. After that I wanted to fix the unconnected or double lines. And since character number 7 is not being used, I can use that one to create the same bracket without the bottom line. Same as the last time, creating the bold version is just a question of adding few more pixels. And I actually like this version even more. Let's create one more font that will be more rounded. So instead of square brackets, we will have round brackets. I will also unbold the other parts and fix some digits. The character number 7 could be slightly skewed and also include the bottom part, and that way it could be used for digits 4, 5 and 6. And since we no longer need a double line, we can use that character to fix the appearance of digit 6. Character number 4 is also not being used, so we can use it to make the 7 and the 9 less round. And hopefully at this point you have a better idea how to draw a font, so let's move to the exporting stage. In many of my previous tutorials I have used this great online tool, and it's nice because you also get all the Arduino code, but this time I need something more complex. So I switched to Excel. I've resized few of the cells to have the square look, so this will be our place for our digits. And then I've entered zeros and ones to set the lit and unlit pixels. It's hard to imagine how this will look like, but we can use conditional formatting to help with this a little bit. So I will create a new conditional formatting rule and set the zero number to be gray and number one to be some dark gray or almost black. We would also need the byte array, and for that we can use the text join function without any delimiter, doesn't matter if we ignore or not ignore empty cells, and we want to join those cells. 
we also want to add the capital B in the beginning and that should do the trick. So if I expand those cells, this is what will be copied into Arduino. So with a little bit more clicking, the Excel spreadsheet could look something like this. Again, we have eight different characters. We also have the empty one and the fully filled one and those should be modified because those are from the built-in memory. Again, you change the cells by typing either one or zero, but thankfully you can also copy and paste cells into multiple places. If you ask me why I haven't used Excel from the beginning, it was still a little bit easier to do this in the Illustrator first. The next piece of the puzzle is pulling those digits together and for it I have a simple code so based on the number that I type in here it will look for this cell and place the content down here so I will use 0, 2, 3, 1 for digit number 2 and continue like this with the other digits. When you see a hash symbol it's because the number 254 cannot fit into the cell because it's very small. And once this piece is done I'm generating the Arduino code down here both for the special characters as well as for the individual pieces of those big digits. For testing the code I'm using Wokvi which is a free online Arduino emulator and I've created this draw big digit function that draws a big digit made from four custom characters on a certain position and then I'm calling this function inside loop function to draw five digits then wait a second and draw another five digits. So if I restart a simulation we should see five digits wait a second another five digits and this is for the fun that we've just created. And here is the code with all 24 versions of the digits running in the emulator. I have so many digits that I have to actually put some data into the program memory, otherwise it wouldn't fit into Arduino Uno. And here is the same project running on the real Arduino. I'm using the OLED version of the 16x2 character display and it looks great. If you want to use those big digits for your own project, all the source files are on GitHub. If you want to learn more about character displays, I do have few videos where I describe the process of creating custom characters step by step. I will put the links down in the description of this video. If you have any questions, please put those down in the comment section. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you soon. Thanks and bye.